Hey, what's going on, folks? Uh, just a little warning. This could definitely turn into a rant, possibly. I'll try not to, too much, but there's a good possibility. And I haven't done these in a while. Um, but when I come out of the gym, I'm kind of clear-headed, so I wanted to talk about a couple of things. First of all, you guys are, are blowing up my DMs and my phone about puppy questions in regards to what I'm doing with my puppy. I'm not going to get into all that now. Uh, we could probably do something like that later on. But one of the, listen guys, the biggest, one of the biggest issues, if not the biggest issue in dog training, which the average dog owner creates so many problems for themselves is too much freedom too soon, okay? And I kind of do the opposite of what the average dog owner does, okay? So the average dog owner gets their puppies and they enjoy them and they're running around the house and then they're amazed when they stop and they pee or they poop or they tear something up or they chew on something. They're babies, they're babies. Enjoy them, love them, but you gotta understand there has to be a lot of management there. If you don't manage them now, you're gonna have to manage them later. And I like to do the opposite. I like to really, really give them their freedom as they earn it, as we go along where they can be trusted and they don't develop bad habits, okay? Now, with that being said, outside of the home, I don't put my puppies on a leash, but I live in a safe place. Let me reiterate that, okay? If you're in a safe place, my puppies start off off leash, all right? Again, the average dog owner, they give their puppies all this freedom inside the home to get into trouble. And then every time they go outside, they're on a leash. Every time from day one. And then what happens is the second that puppy finally gets off leash and has a little freedom, it becomes a novelty. Boom, they're gone. You know, they're going to run around and enjoy that freedom. Take advantage of you being everything to that puppy at this stage. You know, an eight-week-old puppy, 10-week-old puppy, they want to be with you. They're going to follow you around. Take advantage of that. Use that. You know, walk around your property. Show the puppy where you go. If you have a dog that already can do that, you allow the dog to, to help out showing the puppy what to do. But again, with that being said, if you live in a safe place. Now, when I picked up Dante, I had an eight hour drive home from Chicago and I made plenty of stops at very busy truck stops. Of course, I'm not allowing Dante off leash at a truck stop, okay? So I put him on a flexi lead and I exposed him to all the craziness of a busy truck stop. Tractor trailers driving by, air brakes going off, you know, you take advantage of that stuff. So you have to use common sense. Of course, if you're in a busy area near a busy street, you don't wanna let your puppy run around off, off, uh, off leash. But at your home, guys, around your home, outside, start off off leash. Take advantage of that puppy wanting to be with you. Now, here's where the rant will probably start a little bit, okay? Shit, I don't even know where to start here. Uh, many of you know I've been doing these, these free e-collar clinics, right? We've done a couple now. Um, very, very well received. A lot of people coming from very far away. Even though I beg people, do not come from far away for these. It won't be worth it. They still do because there are a lot of committed dog owners and dog trainers out there. And uh, really enjoyed both weekends. The first weekend, of course, it's brand new. So there's a lot of bumps and, you know, it was brutally cold and there was a lot of traffic. So it was hard to, it, it was, it was tough, but met some amazing people and you know some awesome dogs but a lot of dogs really struggling okay big time two weeks later we did another one this past weekend and i really enjoyed it i mean these people that showed up from all over and brought their dogs from really far away the changes in some of these dogs that i saw from two weeks ago was mind-blowing like mind-blowing what people can do when you give them the right information. Like really, really impressive stuff. I, it just, it really made my day. And that's, it makes it worth it to give up your time and, and you know, spend three, four, five, six hours on a Saturday working with all kinds of people. It, it really does. I'm telling you, if the general public could have seen the changes in some of these dogs, they would have been blown away. They wouldn't have believed it, you know, because I was little had a hard time believing it at times. But here's where the rant might start a little bit, guys. And I don't know what the right answer is here. 
but so many of these people that come to these group sessions have already been through multiple trainers, many of them. I've talked about this in the past. I stay away from it now because it, it, I, I try to stay away from the negativity, you know, and I've never used names. I've never called people out by name, but at this point, I'm starting to wonder, I don't know what the right answer is, but I can't explain to you how many of these dogs had an e-collar slapped on them from day one with other trainers and just completely destroyed, completely destroyed. I'm talking quick example. E-collar goes on a service dog trainer. Think about that, a service dog trainer. Bullshit, just more bullshit. A service dog trainer takes a dog with no training, already a little timid, cranks an e-collar, a mini educator up to 98 and lights the dog up. Can you give me one reason why that individual should not have their name posted publicly for everyone to see and why they shouldn't have their face stomped in? Give me one reason. That is actually the majority of the people showing up to these things have been to similar situations, similar trainers. Let me shut my window here. Someone with a little wiener is cranking their engine. Little wiener guy, quiet down. <laughs> little wiener guy's cranking his loud car. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the right answer is at this stage anymore, guys. But people don't know. The general public doesn't know. They go by people's websites. They trust them. They pay $2,000, $3,000 for a two-week board and train, and they don't understand what is being done to their animal. I can't imagine giving my dog to a stranger not knowing the history there. Maybe someone watching this can come up with an idea. What is the right answer? Do we post these names publicly? Because many of the names people you know they're very proud of their shit all over Facebook and social media. Very proud. They show it, you know. They, they show them walking. One lady, one lady suing somebody that put her on blast for destroying her dog. Crippled this dog with the friggin' e-collar. You know, JS is her initials. She's suing them for slander. It's not slander, it's factual. You're a piece of shit, you know. And you studied under scumbags that destroy one dog after another. And this is the normal today. I stay away from this stuff. I stay out of it. I do my own thing. Um, but I'm getting one dog after another, guys. And so for anyone, the reason I'm talking about it now is I've done it before. And people were like, yeah, I think you're full of shit because I don't see these dogs. I don't see these people. And then it's funny. I always use one example. I had one female trainer actually say that to me, blast me on the post that I'm full of shit because she doesn't see them. And I didn't say nothing publicly at the time, but she was actually one of them doing it. That's why you don't see them. You're the problem. You're the friggin' problem. I have no tolerance for someone that treats the animal that way. None. I love this animal. I love everything about the dog. It's a living, breathing, emotional creature that should be treated with nothing but respect. And for these scumbags to take advantage of the most trusting creature on the face of the earth, well, there's nothing too bad that could happen to them. Nothing. I don't care what your skill level is as a trainer, what your accomplishments are. I don't care about none of that shit. If you treat the people and you treat the animal right, then you could have a decent future working with animals, working with dogs. But a lot of these scumbags that are just looking to build their business and shuffle one dog in after another, you know, we just saw a post this morning from a, a dog trainer that, that I respect, you know, very much, <laughs> that talked about how long he can't do the shorter boarding trains. And by shorter, three or four weeks is short to a lot of us, you know? It's not enough time, guys. It's not enough time. If you think that you can completely change a dog's life in two weeks permanently without too much pressure, you're fucking high. 
you're fucking high and you don't know what you're talking about. It takes time. It takes time. So this is going to piss a lot of people off. It's going to piss a lot of my friends off. People that I like, I just don't think you're a good trainer. People that I like, but I would never send you one of my dogs. Never. You know, there's people that I don't like personally, but if they treat the animals properly, I'll recommend people to them all the time. I, and I do it. I do it often. I, I recommend trainers that don't like me, that talk shit and hate on me all the time. But if they're good trainers and they treat the animal right, someone needs a recommendation in that area, I'll send them to them in a heartbeat because I don't give a shit about the personal stuff. I give a shit about the well-being of the animal. You know, that's what it comes down to. Why I stay booked for over a year in advance, longer if I want to be, is because I treat the animal right. I'm not God's gift to dog training. I'm not the best dog trainer in the world. I might not even be the best damn dog trainer in my house as far as I'm concerned, you know, but I'm always going to respect the animal and I ain't going to do shit behind closed doors that I wouldn't do in front of the owner. So you douchebags, you scumbags, you know, that continue to destroy these dogs. We're going to come up with something to start having some kind of a list where people can report this stuff. I, I, I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but I would definitely take, um, I'd love your opinion on, on, on some of the more seasoned people on here. We got to come up with something guys, because, um, like I said, I, I'm not a perfect dog trainer, you know? I've never, never saw a video of mine where I don't make a ton of mistakes. So I'm not claiming that. But you'll never see me, you'll never see me flatten a dog. Never, never in my life. By the way, take for example, the service dog trainer that destroyed that dog on a 98, that dog suffering, struggling. Guess what we did with that dog? We continued use an e-collar with the dog. And the dog did fine because I earned the dog's trust first. I spent a little time with the dog. I got on the ground, right? The dog rubbed up on me, laid with me. I rubbed the dog. I gave the dog a massage. I touched the dog. I moved with the dog. I used the leash. And then once you have that trust and you reintroduce something properly, that dog gives you everything. Now I could say that and no one can call bullshit on it because there's a big group of people there watching. You know, big group of people there. I saw dogs two weeks ago that were completely shut down and scared of their own shadow. And two weeks later, these phenomenal friggin' dog owners come back with their dog buzzing around, excited, full of life, jumping from place to place and loving the work, loving the training. That's a beautiful thing to see, you know? And what everyone kept saying was, the little things, the little things that we focused on, that I showed them, that we talked about, that's what made the difference. The little tiny things that you're not picking out, you know, not the place command or the e-collar or this, all the little things, you know. We had dogs that couldn't be near another dog without just wanting to, to kill every dog. And two weeks later, they're hanging in a group or all having a conversation. And the owner says, two and a half years, I've never done this. I didn't even do it. They did it but I just pointed out the little things that they could do better, that they can make a change. These are good people. You know, we had people drive from 14 hours away for a frigging group class. Think about the commitment on that. Some of these people, their dogs were destroyed by multiple trainers that should never have an e-collar in their hands. Never. I will get a lot of hate for this. I, there's no doubt about it, you know? Because people are going to say, you know, who, who, who are you to put yourself on a high horse? Well, you know what? I'm someone that's never going to harm the animal. That's, that's who I am. And if you're one of those trainers that put the well-being of the animal first, then I'll, I'll support the hell out of you. Even if I don't like you, even if you don't like me, I will support you if you put the animal first. If you're not destroying the animals. But this bullshit where these douchebags are slapping an e-collar on the dog and, 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 and just frying them into fucking submission and giving them nothing, you know? It's like, I mean, come on, you know? Enough is enough. So I'm sorry about the, the negativity. I stay away from the net. I really do. I stopped a while ago. I don't 
I just stay away from all the bullshit. I don't get into the dog groups. I don't do the bickering back and forth. I, I stay out of it, you know, because it's useless. It helps no one. I, I have a very good life. I'm very happy. My life is fulfilled. I don't have to get into that bullshit. I don't have to worry about others. But it's not about... It's not just, a, it's not about poor training or people doing things wrong. I don't give a shit about that. I'm not the dog training police. But we all need to be the dog training police when it comes to animals being physically and emotionally harmed. I think it's all of our responsibility. And I don't know what the right answer is. But I think a lot of us who maybe have some kind of voice in this industry need to step up. We need to step up and put ourselves out there and give people an outlet. Because listen, people are scared to say anything because these trainers come at them hard. They threaten them. They attack them. They hire attorneys. <laughs> if you're going to destroy an animal and then sue someone for complaining about it, you're a piece of shit. You deserve nothing but the worst. You're a piece of shit. You deserve nothing but the worst. You scumbag. You and your douchebaggery. You should be ashamed of yourself. You don't deserve to be near these animals. Something's got to be done. If you have any suggestions, if we could be part of something to stop this bullshit, I got more time on my hands now. I just may, I just may maybe start a public group where we report this stuff and let people decide. Okay, but people have to be open-minded and be willing to get along even if you don't like each other or agree with each other. You know, if we're going to do it for the betterment of the animal, then you got to put your personal bullshit aside. Okay? Peace.